Today I'd like to talk to you about worldviews and the importance of a Christian understanding what their worldview point is from a biblical creation standpoint, from a scriptural standpoint. The reason is, is because there are many people in Christian churches today all around the world who have no concept of what a biblical worldview is. Now, in light of that, because of the apostasy that is increasing in our world today in Christian settings, Christians have no idea how to effectively share the gospel from a biblical creation perspective. Now, this obviously plays over into youth, youth ministries, and a lot of the churches that are more community-oriented where they're trying to reach out to youth, but the youth are immersed in worldviews in Christian churches that are perhaps not even Christian by any means. So, how do we eradicate this problem? Personally, I think one of the ways that we can effectively do this is to educate our youth, obviously, what a biblical worldview is, and then how to communicate to them how to communicate the biblical gospel to their friends, to strangers that they meet, you know, wherever they are. Uh, if they understand what a non-Christian world viewpoint is, for instance, what are these other concepts of God, of other belief systems? If they have a little bit of knowledge about these other belief systems, then they can listen to people and then effectively communicate a biblical Christian worldview. And again, the biblical Christian worldview is based on Genesis 1.1, which is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, what happens if you are a teenager, you've been brought up in a Christian church, you're going to a Christian event and you meet, your, you meet friends or you invite friends from school and they come and they're from a Hindu background or from, they're, they're, they're from an Islamic background or a, or a Buddhist background or they're involved with some form of alternative therapy that includes occult energy work and New Age principles. Well, these obviously come from a different worldview, a different concept of God. And so the young teenager wanting to reach out from a Christian perspective and to share the gospel, if they know just a little bit about what their friend believes, then they can more effectively reach them for Christ. Now I draw back and I say, well, what about the youth ministers, the youth pastors in these churches? How can they effectively teach Christians what these other worldviews are without obviously immersing them in false teachings and, and viewpoints that are obviously not Christian? Well, a, a youth minister doesn't necessarily need to give them the whole thing. They just need to teach them a little bit about what the concept of God is. You know, is it is a monotheistic God or is it a uh, oneness type of uh, philosophy? Uh, for instance, pantheism or panentheism is a mystical occult Eastern worldview. It's rooted in an evolutionary concept that the universe is one or a monistic worldview point. Monism meaning one, a pantheism, pan meaning all, theism, God. So you have a monistic, pantheistic type of belief system which comes from the East. Well, we who are in the West believe more in a Judeo-Christian worldview, that God is separate from the creation, that we are sinners and we're in need of a savior. Hence you have Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, who is God from all eternity, manifest in human flesh, who died in a sinful, I'm sorry, a sinless human body. Christ was uh, without sin and as our savior, uh, died and rose again from the dead. So you can communicate who Christ is, what he is uh, from a Christian standpoint. And obviously that's gonna go diametrically opposite and opposed to a monistic, pantheistic worldview. And I think it's important that these uh, youth leaders and youth ministers reach our generation with this type of simple educational equipping of comparative religions, what are worldviews, what are different concepts of God, in order to educate the youth so they can see very clearly, you know, in contradistinction to what their own Christian worldview is from a scriptural standpoint. And I think that's a way we can effectively reach the youth um, and teach them to evangelize properly. And obviously we have to talk about sin, repentance from sin, who Jesus is, you know, what, what took place at the cross, and obviously the resurrection, and, 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 and share those things. But those are gonna be completely meaningless unless we understand where people are coming from. Uh, years ago, I was in India, and uh, you know, I was there to share with a lot of pastors. Well, there's also a lot of people that we were shared with there that are not Christians, 
by any means. You talk about Jesus Christ and they think he's just a simply another avatar or he's another yoga guru, another teacher. And so uh, we'd have to very clearly define that this is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is God from all eternity. He's completely different than the, than the Hindu monistic, pantheistic concept of God in the Hindu, in the Hindu you know, deities. And so as we, as we clearly navigate through this worldview clash and contrast, then we can present a Christian biblical worldview and the biblical gospel of salvation. And I think that's absolutely imperative today in the church. We're, I mean, youth ministries all around the world are missing the boat completely, uh, you know, so to speak, as far as educating youth in how to reach other people for, the, for Christ, for the Lord. Let me give you an example of how the youth, in many cases, are missing the boat, so to speak, as far as presenting biblical evangelism, the biblical gospel to their friends. Kids are immersed in social media these days, and people are posting stuff, even as teenagers, that have a completely occult worldview, whether it's, you know, presenting yoga or energy work or Reiki or some of these alternative types of spirituality uh, that the Christian youth are being subjected to. Well, how do these teenagers effectively reach out and, and communicate? That is an occult, dangerous worldview. Well, they have to know what they believe first as Christians. And I'm take a step back and say, are they even learning that? Are they learning who Christ is and that he's different from the gurus in the East? Because a lot of teenagers will just say, well, Jesus loves you. And their friends will say, well, what does that mean? Well, if they're not educated about the love of Christ, why he came, what he's done for us, that he came to, to, he came to die for sinners, you know, then the zeal's gonna be gone. They're not gonna effectively share who Christ is, what he is, what he's done for them as a savior of the world. But in light of that, it's, a, it's, it's important that they bring in that concept that he's a savior of the world. That's completely different than this monistic, pantheistic mindset of people saying, well, we can just do yoga. We can, we can meditate and we can tap into these divine energies. And now I know this may sound kind of bizarre, but it's going on, it's going on in our community. Our own kids have tried to reach out to some of their friends. And some of their friends, they just think that, oh, they're just, they're just Christians. They don't know what they're talking about, you know? But again, I would try to teach the youth in the community, how do you lovingly present the gospel to these people who are immersed in these foreign worldviews from our Judeo-Western culture? The whole culture here is now immersed in, in these different types of techniques. And the reason why I'm, I'm talking about specifically things like yoga or Reiki or alternative therapies, Ayurvedic medicine, which is essentially Hinduism, uh, these concepts of uh, the inner divinity and spirit guides, this, this type of material and spirituality is being thrust upon youth across the world. And it is coming, I see it coming mainly through uh, movies, through advertising, uh, marketing. I mean, you name it, it's coming through the television, it's coming through social media and many different avenues of social media. And so the kids, it's basically the children, the kids are being trained in social media to accept and embrace this new age worldview. New age is an older term, but it's, it's, it's still out there. New age is the idea that we are all God. We need to tap into this divine uh, inner divinity or remember that we're God. And the way that we remember that we're God is through the use of various techniques, meditation, mantras, centering prayer, and such and the like. And so that's, you know, trying to teach these youth how to effectively engage their own culture, their own peer group, is teaching them what is the biblical concept of God, that God is separate from his creation, and then going on from there, from the book of Genesis onward, and finding out who God is, what he is, and how he's different from these other, other belief systems.